a session recap of uh, 11th November, sorry, 18th of November, 11th was last one, 11th, was pretty good for us and I think this might be also very good tomorrow. I will show you potential setups on four of those currency pairs and we will see also what we could have got in last week. So judging from this perspective, <clears throat> this really looks like, uh, well, we have changed a bit about our configurations. I will show you that especially on cable, I had, uh, we will see, I will show you everything. Last week has changed a bit about cables, so if you followed my analysis on Forex Factory and Admiral Markets page, you would have seen probably that I have made a nice reversal for uh, GBP. Basically, it got to the pip, to the target, 61.45 was it. And now we potentially can have a nice up trust to 62, but slow. Let's go step by step. First, prior to my, to my uh, session recap, we will see if Mr. Mikhail has something prepared for you and please stay with us. After Mikhail finishes, I will continue with session recaps and possible setups on these pairs. So bear with us. Good evening, good evening everybody. Good evening, Nana. Good evening, everybody. Uh, it's very nice to see all of you here today. I'm very grateful for all your participation. I think it's going to be a, a great webinar session once again. I still see people are arriving, so it will be a very nice to talk about something a little bit different before I pass the floor to Nana again. I hope everything is fine with my presentation. You can see and hear me. My name is Mikhail Onohov and I'm a client relationship manager for Admiral Markets. At the bottom you can see my email, my Skype, my LinkedIn and also my trading camp email account. You can always email me if you seek some very good online education. Today is going to be a very interesting episode of our fun with Forex. I'm going to talk about one of the most amazing oil traders that have ever existed. So please listen. What do you think? How easy it is to purchase a contract for different for difference nowadays or a CFT? It's very easy. All you have to do is register a number of standard account and if you have an opportunity to bet on the movements of stocks, commodities and indices, you can open and uh, orders and close it within minutes or leave it open for a while longer without a care in the world. Would you think trading CFDs was as easy as it is nowadays if after opening a, lot, a long order on crude oil, for instance, you would actually have to accept a delivery of a few barrels of oil. You cannot tank your car with it. It just sort of sits there all day until it appreciated in price. It's not very convenient, though, is it? Just try to imagine all those bottles sitting somewhere neatly in your apartment. I want to tell you a story of Andrew Hall. I don't have a very good picture of Andrew, but his story is still magnificent. In 2003, Andrew Hall had the belief that the price of oil would rise dramatically in the next few years. Back then, oil was trading at around $30 a barrel, can you imagine? And coming out of the recession, few thought prices would rise anytime soon. So Hall bought so-called long-dated oil future contracts that would pay off in the, if the price of oil topped 100 and at some point of the next five years. Because Holt made a bet or would reach a price that few could imagine was possible, he was able to buy the contracts cheaply. It was a risky move. If the price of oil never reached 100, the contracts would expire worthless. Instead, when oil topped 100 in 2008, Holt's fiber division made a bundle, far more than he would have made if he just bought uh, if we just boil oil. So Hall's ability to produce outsized profits for City comes from the creative ways he had found to make money of the oil markets. Doing things that would either be impossible for the average small trader or that most traders just won't think of. Earlier this year, for instance, Hall and his traders rented a tanker and filled it with one million barrels of oil. 
Oil prices were down, but those traders thought that they were going up again. So future contracts packed to distant months deliveries were expensive. The better deal was a, was a real thing. And with the shipping business mired in the recession, Howe was able to get a tanker to park offshore somewhere with his oil for a very modest sum. You were able to get a better price if you were willing to take possession of the actual commodity. That's what Howe said, but it was a lot riskier. So next time you're in front of your meta trader, logged into Admiral Standard, trading on CFDs, remember how much nicer it is to waive the responsibility to accept the physical asset and just trade on the contracts of difference. Thank you very much for listening to this fantastic story. If you have any more stories you would like to share with me, you can always do so by emailing them to me at mo.admiralmarkets.com. Thank you very much for your attention, guys. I will now pass the floor back to the lab. Thank you very much. very much Mikhail. Now we will continue with our session recap. Let's see what happened basically last week. I have prepared, let me close this, now I don't need this, and I will show you 11th. Last week it was market plan for Euro dollar. We had sell around 34.30, 34.50 with stops around 35.20, tar targeting 33.00. Well, basically, what happened with this trade? This trade was very good. It didn't reach our target, 33. But the sell-off from 30, anywhere from 34, 30, 34, 50, basically was is, was inducted by strong news release. Well, it was. A shakeout. I I I wrote that on my pro on my trade on forex factory. That was a fake out, shaking, uh, weaker stops. So, for those who sold around 34.30, 34.50, it was very good trade. Why? Let's see. Euro dollar here, and this was when we had a webinar. Eleventh. It was 9 o'clock. What happened basically, price went to 34.15, something around that, and then it started to fall down. So I, I have told you many times about that level, 34.15, right? Uh, 35.15, sorry, and 34.15. So what happened is you could have taken this trade, but well, it was a bit late. And next day, the price went to our spot. Went to our spot where we had a sell set up. That was this spot. Basically five pips draw down for 65 pips. So this trade was, I can say we, we got a bit of luck here, okay? This was the setup. And I said dead stops, so probably many of you maybe went with lower lot size due to, well, a bigger stop. But eventually, the stop on this, this was four hour setup, but if you went by zooming in into one hour, you could have seen basically that the price was rejected here and then tried to shoot up but it was a false move to the upside and this was the spot where we could sold it. So that may be a bit of uh, down leveraging, but at least if you if you got maybe with a trailing stop, you, you can use trailing stop when trading those, I don't know, higher moves, bigger moves. You can use trailing stop. And maybe I will have a special webinar about trailing stop because many traders ask me, where would, uh, do I use trailing stops? I don't use it on, on lower time frames, except when I want to scalp with a bit of leverage, then I can use uh, trailing stop. But most of uh, professional traders use it only on higher time frames. So maybe we will have a special webinar just about trailing stops. So I will show you how to use it on lower time frames and maybe on, 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 on bigger time frames if you, if you trade uh, four hours daily. 
But what happened with this trade is we, we got here, let's say, anywhere from 34.30 to 34.50. And the trade went here, 33.90. Well, what happened is this was fake move. This was move caused, caused by a false statement that euro might cut rates a bit lower. So that happens in forex from time to time. And I, even I, I, I had a short somewhere there and I had made some profits. But on this move, now I, I won't go back to my forex factory analysis and other markets because I, my projection also said that this can be higher. What happened is I got here, somewhere here, and I got stopped out even though I knew that the trade will be higher later and really it went higher. It, it was all on Admir Markets uh, web page, Admir Markets analysis, uh, Forex Factory, worldwide investment, wherever I manage the trade. So maybe if you follow me you could have also got a long trade. And now what I do I see for today or tomorrow? This is very important. Tomorrow we will have, you need to pay attention to calendar. This is the calendar. This is the strongest news for Euro dollar. For, do, for all of you who don't know what it is, this is the, strongest, the stronger and the strongest news for Euro dollar of all the news. So. It doesn't have to do with dollar, it, has, it only has to do with German economic sentiment. And what is very special about this news? That even though if our trend is to the upside, as we can see, this is uptrend, right? We have W pattern, we have break of this pattern, we have pivot, pivot point retest, now sometimes if you see this is not full Camarilla MACD because I don't show all of those indicators of Camarilla MACD on live charts but this is just a part of Camarilla MACD. Sometimes you will see charts like this. You just use for charting, chart patterns and not for entries, not for divergence, just for general analysis. But this is complete trading method which you use and I cannot share it now live so just pay attention. The, this candle here is a hammer, right? The hammer got rejected of this pivot point. This was to, to well today, just after the midnight, right? Now we could have seen that this trend is going to be to the upside. And it was to the upside. Making a double top. So now I need to get back to the analysis from today, if you follow the analysis. I wrote also on, on let's say, here, daily analysis, Euro dollar for November 18th. Euro dollar went close to 35.15 and so on. Now I won't repeat the whole article. And I made a possible, if some breakout happens and Euro dollar reaches 35, 30, 40 zone, I'll be looking to sell. And I did that, based, of course, on Camarilla MACD. But general analysis was also in my favor. I didn't know that this will happen. This is a double top, OK? This is a double top. This was the general analysis, OK? Based on a historical price action. This is historical price, 35.47, OK? And now. Remember, though it's Monday, real deal will be tomorrow after German's new economic sentiment where economic diffusion index will be measured. So what does it mean? That means that tomorrow, even though if we are long, it can reverse our trade and then get us back to the tracks. Now guys, pay attention to that. And I'm always, I will always tell you, pay attention to the news because it can happen from time to time. Let's say that today was German's new economic sentiment. What could happen is the price gets to around here and just prior to news it shoots down. So every time you get those strong news, 
the price may get in other direction and then get back to our direction. I will show you that what can happen here. This is the plan, but then I, I, re, I remind you, be aware, counter trend position, sell around 35, 40, 50, 35, 50 with 15 pip stop, a scalp or scalp swing trade for 10 to 30 pips, buy towards 34.55 with 15 pip stop targeting 34.95. What can happen is, at the time of the news, a euro can really make a nice zigzag trend pattern. But then when new spike come in, it can be like this. And you would think maybe now this is time to go short. No. What can happen is again a fake out. We can have this. So look for fake out setups around 35.40, 35 35.50. What I have presented you fake out strategy. So what can happen is the price jumps to 35.50, 35.40 on strong news and if news is negative then you would probably know that the, that was a fake and you can sell from this pattern. If news come good for, for Euro and the price does not respect the news, it goes lower to 34.55, you can long it because stops are really tight. And that is the plan for, for tomorrow's Euro dollars price action. I just don't know what will happen because of that news, but generally speaking, we are in a bit of a bullish range mode. It's a rangey, but it's a bullish. So it's a, it's a range with bullish bias. Let's, let's make it like that. It's a range with, with bullish bias. So, you can try to sell around 35.40 and you can try to trail or stop after 10 pips profit. And I guess that this level will be protected, so try to exploit it. Even, even if it happens tonight in Asia session, I would try to exploit it because Asia does not have a so, so many, uh, so many uh, how can I say, strong trades. So usually it will be arranged. So we can try to sell it around there and get at least 10 pips. Okay, 10 pips is sometimes is, is good. Don't underestimate the, the power of 10 pips, okay? Because market will not always give you 30, 40, 50, 100 pips, okay? So, pay attention to that, guys. Now I can see that the price is 35.12. So, what does that mean? Again, we can come to this analysis of today. Sell around 35.40. I hope that you have listened to me. Okay? Now cable. This was, well, we had our webinar on 11th. This was, whew, we need to make it to 11th. Okay, 11, 8 o'clock. And the plan was like this. Sell around 60.23 with stops around 60.75 targeting 59.00, guys. Okay? So, what happened was, let us see what happened. 60.23. The plan was it went straight after our webinar to the downside. I couldn't have known that, really. I couldn't have known that. It went straight downwards and I really couldn't think about it, that it will happen basically at 8 o'clock. Well, now someone may have entered around there because it wasn't too far from 60.23, right? It was only 25 pips difference. For You know, there are many type of traders. Sometimes you will get the trade, sometimes you won't get a trade. I will, I will answer all of, all of your questions after the webinar. 
So bear with me, please. Okay. So this, <laughs> well, I haven't taken this trade, but you maybe some of you could. But you see the drop. It was basically 400 pip drop. And basically what happened then is the price went to 60.23 after two days. And then it was sold just for 13, 15 pips. Then it made a drawdown of 60, well, 50 pips. And then again it went to 59.88. <laughs> Not so good, but uh, uh, just before that, I made this analysis. If you remember the analysis, that was a comment that Bank of England may raise interest rates very soon, and those news boosted GBP pair guys. Those were the news that boosted GBP pair, right? Okay. Just those news. And I, I was telling, I'll be looking to buy the dips, particularly in GBP and possibly Japanese yen. We also had a nice divergence fall formed at L3, stop candle around there, buy into dips, targeting 60.95, 61.47. Now, that is important why you should follow my blog on Admiral Markets, because I post daily analysis. And believe me, whoever tell you that daily analysis is easier than 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 the other analysis, he, he lies, because this analysis is very hard. Really, I'm sometimes I'm really need to be very 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 calm, very thoughtful, concentrated to post such analysis. Okay, because basically it was counter trend analysis, and you see it was it was this time. And the price basically was at the time when I wrote was 60.41. The target is here. The target is here, and it was pipped out perfectly. Pipped out, even though I think that it, it wasn't higher than this price. It was just to the pip. So that is why it's important to come to these uh, uh, recaps because in the next few days we can have those setups and also to follow uh, blog and and forex factory. If, if there is a potential reversal trade, okay? So what happened is basically after that, sorry, let me, let me clear this. And what happened is, well, this trade could have gone bad, could have gone good. It depends whether you enter the position, where you close the position or something like that. Uh, Aussie was, let me see the Aussie, well Aussie was a lot better, a lot better last week. This was basically where we had webinar at 8 o'clock, right, somewhere there after the webinar and what we had in mind is Basically, yeah, I will I will get back to GBP. Just let's concentrate now on, on Aussie. GBP is by the dips totally. So let, let us now see Aussie, and then I will get back to market plan for this week. Uh, Aussie has formed a downward channel. Sell around 93.75, targeting 93.15, okay? That was basically after our webinar. The price went up to 93.67. And this, along with Euro dollar trade, was the best trade. After our webinar, you see what happened is, well, the price went 100 pips to the downside. Okay, that was Aussie and Euro Yen, again, maybe the best one. I, now, I, I don't know which is the best one, but also what, what was happening on, 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 uh, on uh, Yen, and then I will get back to cable Aussie and Yen today setups and tomorrow setups. It was what it was. Position sell around maybe 25 pips to targeting or retest of 35 selling two pips below retest candle. Uh, alternatively, bullish BPC above 133.35 or high momentum. That was the setup. 
the alternative setup, but it was good. Why? Because we had a strong momentum. Oh, even though, if you had sell it, uh, let's see, uh, 11th, 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 8 o'clock. Now, this was strong momentum. You need, we needed to go with alternative scenario. Bullish BPC above this level on high momentum. And this is important sentence, on high momentum. That means that we, we need to have a bullish candlesticks and very, very big volatility, okay? And on this candle, you see a four-hour candle. It broke through this resistance. Look at this, guys. Broke through it. And now, breakout, pullback continuation. Now, for all of you who traded this, well done, 200 pips potential, but I haven't taken this trade because I already went, I was in Euro, Dollar, and I don't know which trade I think it was cable that day. So basically, I don't want to over leverage my, myself. So what was this is breakout, pullback, continuation, and it was perfect trade, really. I, I need to say maybe this was the best one. Okay? So that was for last week. And now let's concentrate about this week. As I said, Euro dollar counter trend position 3540, 3550, 15 stop. Accumulation is shaping out. Accumulation is shaping out. Okay, accumulation. What is accumulation? Go to 15 minutes chart. Look at this. This is basically uptrend. Accumulation was around here. And, well, that was the time when I prepared my uh, session recap. This is accumulation. Now, probably, we need to switch to four, one hour. We can see a probable retest of, of this level, guys. 35.02. If candle, one hour candle closes below this level, we can probably see a potential 34.70. Okay? So, this is a bit of now accumulation restart, even on higher time frame. So, tomorrow we will expect a breakout. So, I told you the setup for dollar. Now, let's move to cable. Buy around 60, 90, 80 with stops around 60, 40, targeting 62. This is my opinion. Well, well, who knows, but this is my opinion. Judging from uh, fundamental, judging from a price action on cable, it's buy into dips. We have Mid-term trend, trend line, but basically, not a, I cannot say mid-term, it's, it's basically intra-week trend line from last week. It's intra-week trend line, and we have a shorter-term trend line. We also have some trend lines in between, but basically, this is uptrend. This is uptrend, zigzag, okay. Uh, trust, pullback, trust, pullback, trust, pullback, trust, pullback. So, this is zigzag, bullish zigzag pattern. I would like to see it around these levels. Now it's pretty late, but who knows? Maybe it will just surprise us. Around these levels, 60, 90, 60, 80, 60, 40 would be stop just because of these candles. We have reactions around these levels, 60, 45, 50. So I picked 60, uh, 47 in between number. So confluence around here, you see. This trend line is breaking and making a confluence here. So that is, if we trade, buy around 69.80 with stops around 60.40. Targeting 62 or if you want to scalp, then scalp. But this should be a positional trade. Well, now we have alternative also. Potential head and shoulders in four hour time frame. Sell around 61.30 with 15 pip stop. This is shoulder, this is head, this is shoulder. If we get those two shoulders, basically like this, shoulder, head, shoulder, head and shoulders, sell here to the downside. This is counter trend trade. So 15 pip stop and 15 pip trailing stop because it's a trailing, it's a counter trend trade if it comes around there. So alternatively, you can long around 60, 90. Then if it comes to this level, you can close it and try to exploit probably a short scalp, okay? Now, Aussie is losing strength. Aussie is a commodity currency. It means that if Aussie is going down, we don't do carry trades, but let's say basket trades, sorry. But in basket trades, usually if Aussie goes down, the Euro will follow. GBP, if it's strong, will g 
grow up, it will neglect those down low. So, you see Euro uh, Aussie drops on 25 pips, uh, Euro dollar whew, it dropped 30 pips, but cable is strong, still is strong. So, potentially, this, this really looks like a cable strength, okay? But we have two potential scenarios, okay? Questions after this recap. And Aussie. I don't see anything particular in Aussie just because of this. Tonight will be monetary policy meeting minutes important for you see 11 times per year, two weeks after the cash rate is announced. So guys, whatever I do, I wouldn't trade Aussie now. I had a setup for Aussie today. I got some 20 pips, but even though I'm trading now while I speak, I closed Aussie at 93.90. I got some 15, I think, pips. But that was basically why was that so? Because of M. You see M, this is clearly bearish wedge. Not all of Camarilla indicators are here, mind you. This is naked, almost naked template. So M, this is M, shorted here, got the profit here at H3. If this candle closes retest, we will go to test this lower trend line, possibly pivot point, but just because of those minutes, I wouldn't trade Aussie, okay? This is range. What is this? This is downtrend, then it went to correction, down again, now it's correction. A giant W pattern. It has potential to go up. But this will be the main catalyst for this week, monetary policy meeting, whatever they choose. We don't know. Also, why Aussie went so high? is because of China. China pushed this this Aussie high. There's, there's some announcement for their policy. It was during Asia and uh, basically uh, China and Japan drove the, the, the currency further. So when, when those things happen, we need to go with the trend. So basically this is this is all uptrend and now we could have bought here but after it finishes and now it's almost 7 o'clock. We need to try to think about profit taking. If big boys are taking, taking profit around this time, we will take profit in other form. What that means is if big boys start to take profit, that is counter trend trades. Let's assume that we haven't been in any trade for Aussie. But when they start to take profit, we will make a short trade, Why? right? If the long if, if they are taking profits from long trades, which is supposedly they do, because we have also wedge, we have triple top, we have uh, undecision candle, indecision candle, this is top candle, if you know my trading, uh, how I trade, this is top candle, this is M, so why wouldn't I exploit short trade on their behalf? That is called, guys, smart money, okay? That is called smart money. Trade, but now it's 640, uh, I wouldn't trade now. But let's see a London close that was smart money, okay? M parent profit taking long position. I wouldn't long, I went short, and that was it. So for for these for these setups, <clears throat> sell around 94, 40, 50 with stops around 94, 75, targeting 94, 20. If strong news are uh, expected today, very good news for, for Aussie, then please guys try to stay out of all trades. This is indeed strong resistance. Look at this one, two, three. Look at this tweezers and look at this wicks. So this is resistance. And I think that we can have a blind scalp, scalp around the, that level, okay? We can have a blind scalp around this level. So try to try to exploit 9440 around this, okay? But not on big big news if if candle goes too high. Be very, very because of the, those news, okay? And other thing is buy around 93.50 with 20 pips stop targeting 94. 93.50 is protected, so it's also crossing our a bearish wedge lower boundary, so confluence here, confluence there. If it happens to come there, 
try to exploit a, short, a long position, okay? But this is, uh, at, the, at the moment, now in this moment, how it looks, it looks like a bearish wedge potentially forming in around 94.40, so sell around the top could be very fruitful. And the other, the last, Potential breakout pullback continuation for our strong resistance approaching. What does it mean? We can long into resistance as breakout rates, but only if this 135, is broken. One, two, three, four, five, six scissors, tweezers, bearish tweezers here, indecision candle here. So if it breaks here, guys, it will retest it and it will go up if it breaks from here. So try to be prepared on potential breakout pullback continuation pattern for Euro Yen. Also, sell into 135.50 as fixed scalp position trading the stop after 15 pips. So if it doesn't happen that we have breakout pullback continuation, the price may violently come to this level, 34.50, violent, I mean in momentum straight from here, let's say, and then we can try to make a pending order, 10 pip stop loss, and try to a trail stop after 10 pips, okay? There is alternative scenario, but my preferred scenario is buy position toward and trail the stop after 15 pips. Why would you trail your stop after 15 pips? It's because of this resistance, uh, 35.50, it will prove some resistance, so if you long it from here, you see that this level has been rejection, uh, rejected to the upside, we can trail the stop 15 pip profit, then we will see. If it comes to shoot up of this level, then go, good for us. But if it comes to go lower, then okay, we need to be prepared for a trading stop. So if it comes straight from here, we can short it there. If it fluctuates around here and then on strong momentum breaks, retest and go upward, we can have those setups and stops would go just below uh, 135.10. That means some 20 pips, 25 pips of a stop loss. Okay. Be prepared for that. Not ideal situation considering risk reward, but be be pre prepared. Okay. Now this slides again, and I will answer your questions. This is Euro dollar. This is cable. This is Aussie. And this is Euro Yen. Okay? And now to your questions. Will you close position prior to announcing news? No, I won't if my risk reward is no, sorry, if my lot size, entry size is not that big. Igor, if I, if I make a scalp trade with the leverage, then I will probably close it even if it's, if it's in, a, in a loss, okay? It depends how much leverage, how much volume would I put into the trade. Usually, uh, Euro news, I can leave it, but on cable news, I don't trade cable prior to 10.30, really. Because you see those reactions are very violent on cable, so I, I just close the position if I trade cable. On Euro, I can close it or I can leave it depending on lot size. On cable, lot size doesn't matter to me. I would always, I don't, I never trade prior to news, but if it happens, I would close it, okay? Cable is very risky. Trend line of October and November 7th highs could be tested. Which time frame, which currency pair, then I can answer your questions. So I don't know now which trend line via Tautas Andrasius. I don't know uh, which trend line and, and what time frame. So if you, if you can help me, cable one hour time frame. So, I presume that you maybe think about this, right? 
Is that so? Is this the trend line you were referring to? I needed to zoom into four hour because of I had better view because it's a it's a it's a trend line from 25 of October and let's say that we can even connect this peak also so you think about this trend line I presume that you think about this trend line okay could be tested absolutely it could be tested and it has been tested guy guys look at this 6148 and my target price was 6147 so it was tested. I didn't uh, make this trend line on my charts, but I had that set up basically on CAM, okay? Here. I, I, I removed the red levels from here, so it's a bit clear, okay? So basically it can be retested, but if it breaks to the upside, then we can see 61.85, and I, I, I will go for 62, really. I would go for 62. Even though this level is strong, 61.85, if it breaks it, I would go for 62, okay? It can be tested yet again and it can be broken. So pay attention to that, okay? Next questions. Trades. When you trade, how many trades you risk at the same moment? If, okay. Let's say that this account, look at the balance, this is the demo account, 9,849. If I open a trade with 30 pip stop loss, I would go with 0 0.3, okay? 0 0.3 on this account for 30 pip stop loss. If I scalp, I would go maximum with one lot, okay? It, that, it depends how big your stop loss is. Don't let be fool. Don't let others fool you. You based. Now I will write this down so you can you can see. You always base your entry size depending on your stop loss. Okay. So if my stop loss is 30 pips, I'm willing to risk $90 for this account and to see where it will go. If I scalp, I will make 15 pips stop loss and I will try to leverage a bit. So I can go with, let's say, 0 0.5, but you know, sometimes when you are a, a bit sure about your trade, then you can go with full lot. That's 150%. Uh, so 1.5 to 2%, let's say 3% is if you if you are willing to 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 risk. So that is your maximum risk for building accounts. If you exceed those numbers, stop trading for that day. Okay? All right, Igor. This is the equation which Igor sent. Now, I will, this is also a nice equation, Igor sent this, so it also can be very good. It's a nice equation and it's correct one. But you know, sometimes our psychology kicks in and when you are very sure about your trade, you need sometimes to allow yourself to express, okay? Sometimes you won't be right, but uh, when you are very sure about your trade, sometimes you will be right. So basically, guys, it depends whether you are sure in your trade or not and your, and your risk management. This equation, which I showed you and Igor showed you, basically is, is very good. I have that in my head. So for this account, let's say $9,850, I would go with 0 0.3 for positional trades and anywhere from 0 0.5 to 1 full lot on scalping. So that my risk would be 1.5% maximum, okay? It depends whether you are sure, whether you want to exploit momentum, and whether, but never risk more than 3%, okay? How many trades, again, ah, Goran, uh, 
I, if I have a 0 0.3 trade, let's say on this trade particular, I would open maximum if my total stop loss is 90 pips, then all other trades would be 0. Point, uh, sorry, 0 0.1 or 0. Point, the most 0. 0.15. Because I don't want, let's say on 10k account, to risk more than $300, okay? So if my one trade, first trade, is risking $90, then I have $110 reserve for two or three or four trades. You need, you always need to risk, uh, to, to base your entry size on how much are you willing to risk, okay? And that is the truth. Elsewise, you are gamble. And if you're gambling, that means that you probably would lose your account very soon. I know that it's hard to do that, but guys, if you have $1,000 account and you have uh, another $10,000 spare, then you can try to, well, if you want to build your account, try to go with more lot size. But you need to, prepare, you need to be prepared to fund your account. But if you want to keep it low risk, that you keep your account, then you really need to, to risk, to risk, let's say in between hundred, uh, uh, sorry, uh, one point five to three percent maximum per day. But that is the maximum, absolute maximum. Sometimes even lesser, let's say one percent per day. Okay, and that I mean per day, not per trade, per day. I see that I will need to have another webinar about risk management. Could you explain confluence? You were talking when explaining cable. Confluence, of course, this is confluence. One trend line, inter, inter trend line, that means the current trend. This is, let's say, today's trend, and this is medium trend from last week. Where is the confluence? Confluence is first, confluence is here, because those trend lines are intersecting with my red level, 6093. This is the first confluence. You see the price, it got rejected of the 6093. It went down, probably some stops were, were uh, taken, and then you see the reaction, let's zoom into 15 minute time frame. What happened is, basically you see, it went down, but it shoot it up. So this is the confluence, 1690, and this is also the confluence, 6047, because medium term term trend line, basically, you see how it reacts. It was downtrend, then it was retest and pull back. So this trend line is this is a strong level, 6047.45. So guys, if it comes to down there, either it will jump up or it will be a strong momentum to the downside, but this is the first level, this is the second level. I don't see any levels in between. Now you see the reaction. Cable again is rejecting the 1693, and this is even bigger retracement to the downside, but it can happen that the euro will jump from here, or jump from here, or if this breaks through, that is why I said stops so tight below this level, it will probably come to retest next red level 6020. But for now at the moment this is the confluence. Red line, red line, trend line, and bigger trend line, and this. So intersecting big support resistor levels with with uh, trend lines is also called confluence. Okay guys. I hope it helps. I think that we will have really another session about risk management. I need to show you proper risk management if you don't know how to use it, but it's very important sometimes, not sometimes, I think always it's, it's very, very important to know, maybe the most important thing in forex trading, to have a nice method and to have a good strategy, guys. Okay, this is session recap, I expect new analysis tomorrow. After the zero economic sentiment, we will see whether I will come with GBP or 
euro dollar analysis. Uh, use those setups to your advantage. And of course, follow us on Twitter. We will have new webinars very, very soon. Our next webinar will be, will be, let's see what will be our next webinar. Our range in market retracement and reversal. This is very good subject. I will show you how to basically spot ranging uh, and counter trend and trend market and then we will go again with Fibonacci mean increase because many traders don't want to see the uploaded videos, they want to see it live. Fibonacci for beginners, we will do it again, okay? So pay attention to us, also follow us on, on other markets web page for the website and I hope this will help you to achieve better results, guys. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. I wish you many, many green pips, okay? See you very, very soon. Bye-bye.